if you go to this place of creative solitude, what's your what's your creative process? Is there something you've noticed about mm -hmm. what you do that leads to your to good work? I love to be able not only to lose focus, but kind of to focus on the peripheral view mm -hmm. and to allow um, different things to occur at once. So I will often, in my loneliness journeys, I will often uh, listen to, Le like Leonard Bernstein, anything I can find online by Lenny Bernstein. Mm -hmm. It's reading a nature paper. It's war and peace. It's really revisiting all the texts that are so timeless for me with opportunities that are very, very timely. And I think for me, the creative process is really about bringing timeless problems or concepts together with timely technologies mm -hmm. to observe them. I remember when we did the Mandela Pavilion, we read Moby Dick, the whiteness of the whale, the albino, the different, the other. And that got us to work on melanin. And, and melanin also is sort of an output from the death mass. So it's lots of things happening at the same time and really allowing them, allowing them to come together to form this view about the world through the lens of a spirit being or a living being or a material, and then focus on the world through the lens of that material. The glasswork was another project like that, where we were fascinated by glass because obviously it's superb material for architecture. But we created this new glass printing technology for the first time that was shedding light on the biomechanics of fluid glass, the math and the physics of which was never done before, which was so exciting to us. But revealing new knowledge about the world through technology, that's one theme. Um, the reincarnation between things material and immaterial, that's another theme. Lenny Bernstein, War and Peace, Tolstoy. You've uh, you tweeted a Tolstoy quote from War and Peace, as of course you would. <laughs> Everything I know, I know because of love. Love, yeah, I love this quote. So you use these kind of inspirations uh, to focus you and then find the actual idea in the periphery. Yes, and then connect them with whatever it is that we're working on, whether it's you know high throughput directed evolution of bacteria, um, you know whether it's you know recreating that Garden of Eden in the capsule and what it looks like, the food of the future. It is a little bit like directing a film. Creating a new project is a bit like creating a film, and. You have these heroes, you have these characters, and you put them together, and there's a narrative, and there's a story. Whenever we start a new project, it has to have these, these ingredients of simultaneous complexity. It has to be novel in terms of the synthetic biology, material science, robotics, engineering. All of these elements that are discipline-based or rooted must be novel. If you can combine novelty in synthetic biology with a novelty in robotics, with a novelty in material science, with a novelty in computational design, and bring, you are bound to create something novel, period. And that's how I run the company, and that's how I pick the people. And so that's another very, very important ingredient of the cutting edge across multiple disciplines that come together. And then in the background, in the periphery, there's all these messages, the whispers of the ancient oldies, right? The Beethovens and the Picassos. And... So Beethoven's always whispering to you. Yeah. How could one not include Beethoven in the whispers? 